Lucky here at UTSA with Rogue Rome Battalion. Today we're going to be discussing the Airborne School. The pros, the cons, the layout of the training, and everything else. And as one of the few here in the battalion that wears the Air Troops badge, I'm so excited to talk to you all about it. Let's get into it. So at Airborne School, it consists of three weeks. Ground Week, Tower Week, and everyone's favorite, Jump Week. Ground Week and Tower Week, for me at least, were kind of combined. You learn the basic exiting procedures of an aircraft, what to do if you get snagged, towed, stuff like that, and even how to land most. That's what the main week and second week really is focused on, is your parachute landing fall or PLF. Then, once we get into the towers, you'll be jumping from a 34-foot tower, usually with zip lines. Sometimes you actually will do 250-foot towers, but due to weather and due to the number of students, it is extremely rare for that to happen. But every now and then, it does happen. To get more in depth with ground week though, you're gonna wake up Monday morning after a week or so of in processing. You're gonna wake up Monday morning and take the PT test. While I was there, it consists of the basic two minute push up, two minute sips, and the two mile run. The run I actually really enjoyed, mostly because it's on a one mile track, so two laps and you're done. After that, you'll move directly into training. All right, once in training, you'll be practicing your parachute landing fall day in and day out. You'll be zipped up in the harnesses, you'll be doing buddy rigs where you and another buddy is uh, practicing putting the parachute on each other. It's an immediately fast pace and you jump right into it as, as they want it. So in ground week, it mostly consists of performing your PLFs, exiting the aircraft, and what to do when you're getting dragged or drove by the parachute, how to get out of it, and then mostly doing the swing loader, just a little bit of training towards the end of the week. That's mostly ground week for you. So normal training schedule is like for the first two weeks because the last week is really different. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, besides from the PT test, you were gonna have runs. Your run days is at least a three to five mile run, no more than five usually. It's gonna run at at least a 7.30, sometimes 8.30 pace in between that range. And there's gonna be cadence all the way through because it's airborne school. And you're gonna run around the base. I personally enjoy case uh, runs. I think they're fun, get motivated, all the good airborne stuff. You do get weekends off in airborne school. I spend my time sleeping and eating mostly. I also went around uh, South Columbus, check out what they have going on, and I ran around post just to explore. All right, so Tower Week. Tower Week to me is similar to the Ground Week. You will still practice your PLFs or parachute landing falls, but you will also do 34 foot towers way more. Exiting is important, learning how to exit is important, and not being afraid to jump out of heights is extremely important. If you're afraid, it's fine, I was afraid, but you get over it. It helps you manage that fear. If you're lucky, you maybe the 250 foot tower. I did not do it mostly just because of the time restraints we had while at the school and the number of soldiers that were trying to get the badge. So, it happens. At the end of tower week, you'll be practicing rig edge, learning how to rig up a rucksack to your harness, and even how to pull, release, and do everything you need to. All right, we made it to jump week, and this is the best, in my opinion, worst week of airborne school. I'll get to that later. So once in jump week, you're gonna wake up early and run about three and a half, three miles to the airfield. Once at the airfield, you are gonna practice and do your bar. Pretty much your bar is your basic airborne refresher. It pretty much keeps everything that you have learned throughout the first two weeks in your mind fresh. You're practicing your landings, so your PLFs, your exiting, exiting procedures, and anything, any emergency procedures in case it becomes to that. After that, you'll move into the hangar. Once in the hangar, you cannot leave. <laughs> so in the hangar, you're gonna grab your about 45, 50-pound T11 main parachute and then your T11 reserve, which is about 10 pounds. After that, you and a buddy will rig it up together. Uh, jump master will come by and inspect your parachute. After that, y'all will sit and wait. I have never waited so long in my life. You're gonna wait and wait and wait while watching Band Brothers over and over again until your chalk or your group of uh, paratroopers is called. Once when y'all are called, another check will happen and y'all will move to y'all's aircraft. Pretty much, you're either gonna jump out of a C-130, which is a propeller-based aircraft, or a T-11, which is a jet engine-based. All right, so at Airborne School, you jump at about 1,250 feet AGL, above ground level. And that is fairly common within the Airborne community to jump that high. I've heard jumps happen as low as 900 feet and to as high as 1,500 feet. All right, so once in the air, 
The only way out is to jump. Once y'all do that and have a perfect PLF, y'all are gonna repack the parachute, run back to the staging area. After that, you're gonna be bust back to the hangar, and you repeat it for a total of five times. Everyone experiences for everyone's school is different. Mine, you had one night jump, one combat equipment jump, and three Hollywood jumps. Hollywood jumps are just the reserve and the main combat equipment is the rucksack, weapons case, reserve, and main parachute. The night jump is a Hollywood jump usually. Sometimes I heard it could be combat equipment, all depends. So tips on jumping. Um, pretty much, I would say, be in these together. That's what any, if you're in the other airport school, that's the main thing you get told. You can ask about, should I be nervous over this, or what if I fail? You're not gonna fail anything. Be in these together. Extremely important, you'll learn why, and you'll land safely. So the basic requirement to pass airborne school is usually the PT test. That's the hardest thing a lot of people talk about. Everything else is showing up and doing what you're told. Even the final week of jumping, it's showing up and doing what you're told and landing properly. Not hurting yourself during a PLF is extremely important because if you do, it could ruin your chances of graduating and earning your wings. All right, y'all did your five jumps and graduated. What you get is your airborne wings, and you get some bragging rights. Not a lot of people are airborne, a lot of people are legs. <laughs> but after that, you'll either go back to ROTC, your home unit, or get sent to a new unit. So airborne school does give you more opportunities. It also holds you to a higher standard. It gives you opportunities in SOCs, so special forces, civil affairs, psychological operations, and even lets you go into Rangers since it is a basic requirement. So for a higher standard, Mostly in PT. Graduating airborne school, they expect you to be a good runner, be like calisthenics, and to be overall not willing to quit and give up. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video about airborne school. And always remember, birds up, come and take it, and this will defend.